can you please make sure you've got a um, space for a heading, a circle, any circle drawn, and a tangent, any tangent to that circle, also drawn on there, okay? Uh, what are you in? That's for you. That's right. Okay, now just before, just before we get going on this, I want to point out that circle geometry is kind of, um, it's kind of this two-faced sort of character within the mathematics syllabus. Because I find it simultaneously one of the most enraging <laughs> and fascinating topics within, within maths that you guys have to learn. It's enraging because you all know what it's like when you look at a diagram and you're asked to prove whatever and you're like, I see nothing. I see nothing. I drew it. I drew it again. And it's, like, it's just not appearing to me. And that's very frustrating. I get it. And I, st I have that clear memory. The, one of the reasons why when you ask me a question and I come to you and I'm like, oh, there it is, um, is not because I'm better at circle geometry than you. It's just I've seen more circle geometry than you. I've had more time. Uh, yeah, there's that. Um, <laughs> so here's actually what I'm going to say right now. I mentioned uh, a couple of minutes ago, that by the end of today, we'll pretty much have all of the properties um, categorized, filed away that you will need to know. So that means as a topic, circle geometry will be done. However, it's really important that after we finish with circle geometry, you recognize that you are not finished with circle geometry. Uh, every time that I've given you questions and I've said, okay, do this one, this one, this one, and then I've, le I've left out like vast swaths of an exercise, okay? Here is my suggestion. It took me years to realize this is a good idea. And then when I realized it, I was like, why haven't I told all of the students I've ever taught to do this? What you should do is, once we're finished with circle geometry, I would recommend that as we go through the next topics, topics um, you basically do one circle geometry question. Just one, like a single circle, and some weird angles and that kind of thing. Do one every time you sit down to do any other maths homework. Just do one, okay? Because you're just doing one, it shouldn't take too much time. But secondly, because you keep on doing it regularly, you will keep on flexing that muscle in your brain that recognizes circles and properties and that kind of thing. I can guarantee you in um, 15 months time, when you actually revisit circle geometry again for the HSC, if you've spent 15 months doing no circle geometry, you will remember absolutely none of this. You need to regularly do that, okay? Um, and then it kind of becomes like uh, riding a bike. And like, I haven't looked at circle geometry since the last time I taught it, which is 12 months ago. Um, sorry, more than that. And it's still there because I had that regular practice, okay? So that is part of why it's not just for the sake of time that I'm like, okay, skip two thirds of this exercise. So you've got plenty of material that you can keep on working on, okay? Right, now you've got your circle and a tangent. Oh, sorry, I forgot to say, and this perfectly segues into what we're about to do. Circle geometry can be frustrating, but it's also very playful. It's very playful. Have you noticed when we prove properties, one of the things I just do is say, hey, just draw a circle, any circle. Draw a tangent, any tangent. What I'm about to tell you is, draw a chord here, any chord you like, so long as it touches the tangent, okay? And make sure it's different to the person next to you. Got your ruler out, pop your um, pencil on this point of contact, and then draw a chord. Any chord you like, short chord, long chord, wherever you want it to be. And what you've done, as all chords do, is you have divided up your circle into two segments, right? Two segments. You've got a minor segment and a major segment, okay? Now, have a look at that major segment, the one on the left-hand side, or I don't know, you might have drawn it on the right-hand side. Doesn't matter, which is one of the cool things about this. I think we all agree that any angle, morning, any angle we draw in this segment, they're all gonna be the same size, yeah? So therefore, we can draw any angle we like, right? We, we draw any angle in this segment, they'll all be the same size. So just draw an angle anywhere you like. Pick a point on the circumference. I'm gonna make it, let's see, I'm gonna put mine over here. And then join up the angle that's subtended by this chord, your chord, at the circumference, at your chosen point. Okay.
Hmm. Now, I want you to look really carefully at the diagram we've just constructed. You got a tangent, you got these two segments, and then you've got an angle in this segment over here. I want you to look very carefully, I'm going to mark them in with two different colors. I want you to look very carefully at the angle between your tangent and your chord. The tangent and your chord, so I'm going to mark it in orange. Have a look at this angle over here. And then I want you to have a look at the angle we formed up in that segment over there. Can you see it? I'm going to put it in green. This guy over here. Just look carefully at those angles. Some of you, because we've been doing circle geometry for over a week now, um, some of you have protractors with you, so you can actually measure those angles. And even on my completely freehand diagram, you can sort of see those angles look suspiciously related, right? And that's why I'm pointing that. What do you think those angles are? They look pretty equal, yeah? Now, the question, of course, is, and I'm going to give you a few minutes to have a go at this, as usual, why? Why would, why would they be equal? It's a very simple diagram. Um, why should that be the case? I'll give you some tips. What was the very first shape that we drew on top of the circle? On top of the circle? We drew the tangent, right? We drew the tangent, that was not a coincidence. You know, if, you know a few things about tangents, right? Secondly, this is an angle at the circumference, this green one over here. You know, actually you know quite a few things, that's harder. Because you know so many things about angles at the circumference, that makes it a little harder to choose from, but you have a whole page in front of you that outlines them, summarizes them in a nice, convenient way. So the, the two clues of Ginyu are, there's a tangent, there's a angle in this segment over here. The third tip I'm gonna give you is, probably the most succinct proof of this does require a construction. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but I want you to have a think about it. If you know a construction is necessary, where, where might you draw some things, okay? So I'm going to pause. I'm gonna let you have a few minutes to have a play with it and see what you come up with, okay?